Dean's a man and uh, multiple time world champion. Uh, he hadn't been tapped out in 16 years prior to his submission. Okay? So this submission, to tap out Dean Lister with it, it's 100% legit. And it was only like 10 seconds left in the match. That's how excruciating it was that he had to tap. I mean, the guy knew how much time was left and he had to tap. Okay? So let's get into the details of the move. Okay? Now, before we can get into the actual move itself, we have to understand the position. Okay? There's a lot of important fundamentals on holding a proper head and arm position. Okay? For one, you gotta get good control of this arm right here, starting at the tricep. It's not here, it's not here. Okay, you wanna act like you're trying to tickle his armpit with your fingertips inside there. And then clamp down here. Now, I'm gonna lift up the head with this arm here. And my legs are gonna crawl towards his head as I keep my head down low. There's reasons for everything I'm doing right now, and I'm gonna break it down, okay? The arm I want under my armpit and not out here. Common mistake I see people when they're learning, they come out here. He has this to push my face. If it was a street fight, he could gouge my eyes, okay? Do all kinds of stuff. I wanna be here so that arm's out of the equation now. That's no <coughs> offense. Now, my head up is another common mistake because you're kind of leaning back, it makes sense to be up. But it lets his leg come in, lets his other hand come into play, okay? So I want my head close to his head. Now that other hand cannot do as much and the leg cannot come over, okay? Now another mistake is the legs just kind of being split out over here, which allows him to hook my leg and use counters from there. There's a series of counters from there. So I want to be crawling up high. Now, this arm can be cranking up the head, which does a couple of things. One, it makes him uncomfortable, and two, it prevents him from being able to bridge. If I'm loose here, his head hits the mat, now he's got a lot of bridging power to, to roll me over. Give me a little demo, just like roll me over. Dig that, boom, okay? So now, final detail, which is a little ninja detail. This is a detail taught to me by Matt Hume. Uh, he, actually, one of Barnett's former trainers, okay? Coincidence, we're talking about it. But um, one detail he gave, because we all know that we don't want to do this when we're up here, right? Why do we want to do this? Roll It'll roll me over. Even though it puts more weight on him, like when you're kids, you probably did something like this to your brother or something like I know I did, right? Okay? But my center of gravity, once it comes up the ground, it makes it very easy for him to bridge me over. Okay? So we want to have best of both worlds. Ideally, we'd like to have the weight all the way down and all the weight on him at the same time. And we can. Okay? Right now, the way I'm sitting, He's relatively comfortable, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, even when I'm cranking his head, relatively comfortable. My weight is on the side of my foot here, on, the, on this foot here, and mainly on my right butt cheek. I can feel it, boom, right here, okay? On my hip and butt there, okay? What I wanna do is lift up my butt just enough so a sheet of paper can fit underneath it, okay? Just a little tiny bit of space. That little bit of space will transfer all the weight to his chest and to here, Okay, while not compromising my center of, of, of uh, my center of balance. Okay, so when I'm here, it's right here. David can tell you it feels a lot more weight. Okay, but can you tell from looking outside? Probably not, because I have my shorts, right? And the shorts, uh, it's just enough where a piece of paper, like if he's counting to ten, go ten, ahead. Nine, see, it's nice and comfortable. Eight, seven, and right there's the weight, uh, and you can't see from the outside because the clothes are are, are, not, are it's so thin. The clothes are covering. If I was wearing, no one's got the Speedos on today? <laughs> Edgar does. Edgar, well, he's got the, if, I, if Edgar was to do it, you could probably see it, okay? If, if I you know, had the tight clothes, you would see that just a little bit of space off the ground. But that's how little it has to be. If you do this, like that, where you can see it, he'll, if he has any, any bridge whatsoever, he'll bridge you over. Go ahead. That's, 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 yeah, exactly. He'll bridge you over. Guys got it? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, men down here... His main thing is one, the bridge, which takes absolutely no technique to try. Like instinctually, the guy's gonna try to bridge you. So you gotta be ready for that. And the main thing that's gonna take care of that is keep, keeping the head propped up, okay? And keeping your weight down and your center of gravity down, okay? Now another variation to this hold is to cup your own thigh right here. So you can prop his head there. Now if he's uh, a skilled wrestler, what he's gonna do is he's gonna try to turn to his side and pull his arm out, okay? That's why you can't, you shouldn't, you know, hold it like this, because he could turn his elbow in, and now he'll get to his knees, and then he's on the way out now. Okay. When I sense he's coming out, I counter that by pulling the arm up and putting him back down. 
Okay, very important detail. You guys got that? Yes, sir. In jujitsu, a lot of people don't really understand it's keeping this position. So like you'll see people down here flat and the person hitting them here. That's ridiculous, okay? If he lets go of this, you tuck that elbow in immediately and you work your way out, okay? Uh, whenever I get in an MMA and someone's trying to punch me here, I'm so happy about that. I let the shots come in and I just focus on tucking my elbow in. Now what happens if this happens is they do what? Oh, and they lock their hands again like a panic thing. It's already too late. Once they get to here, they're out, okay? But a lot of Jiu Jitsu guys, they don't really, um, they're more comfortable being flat on their backs. They work their legs more. Yeah, exactly. And a guy be hitting here or playing with the wrist, trying to go for a submission, and they're like flailing the legs around or trying to grab their hand. Like when, when reality, the second the hand comes off the tricep, you're tucking the elbow in and going to your side. Okay, so eventually your knees and escaping. You guys got that? Yes, sir. Um, if you, no one's gonna knock you out from here. I know someone's saying, oh, Ronda Rousey's fight. Ronda Rousey knocked the girl out with the throw. Okay, those punches at the end were just the, the, the yeah, the icing on the cake, all right? Okay, um, from here, keep your cool there punching from here. And like I said, focus on tucking that elbow in. I think before I teach the crank, I want you guys to first understand the position. So get with your partners, okay? Get to here, and I want you first to get the right position. From here, ask him to turn to his side, okay? Pull him back up, put him back down. Ask him to try to push your face. Shouldn't be able to. Ask him to try to hook your leg with his leg. And hook my leg. Oh, yeah. Shouldn't be able to. And the last detail is get the weight transfer right there. You guys got it? Yes, sir. Do this back and forth with your partner and then we'll go with the crank. On three. Oh, any questions? Cool. On three. Okay. One, two, three. Go. Go. Now we'll get into the, into the actual crank, okay? Now, we have to understand the position, okay? Technically, you can, if you got the position down, you can crank the head here and finish him here, okay? The idea is to drop your weight into the chest, I'm sorry. Okay. The idea is to drop your weight into his chest as you're cranking the head up, kind of like a scooping motion, kind of like a, like a cat stretch uh, motion, you know, where you're here and you go down and then up, okay? So from here, I come here and I drop the weight in as I crank the head up. What you don't want to do is just crank the head straight back. Okay, one, it can, can compromise your base, but two, it releases the pressure. Like right now, I'm gonna try to crank it and I go backwards. He's not you know, tapping at all, right? Okay. It, the idea is a combination. Now, personally, I don't like trying to crank this out with one arm. I feel like it's a little tiring and a little hard for me. Bigger guys would have a be more, uh, better time in this move. Not to say this, that the small guys can't do it, but having exercise is going to help because just gravity coming down on his chest. Um, the way I like to do it, uh, ideally, you would like to come with both hands, right? But we discussed that's not a good idea. Why? Yeah, because he can turn to his side and tuck his elbow in and he's out, right? So. I try to combine both worlds. My grip is like this. I come around here. By the way, when I'm sitting up like this, I'm talking to you. Where is my head really supposed to be? Outside. Exactly, down here, okay? So what I like to do is come around here and scoop the elbow with my forearm and lock my hands here. So now I have him here. If he tries to pull his arm out, you pull it out? Oh. No, and I have the power now of using both hands when they crank, okay? So from him here, I sit into him and crank right here and hold, okay? And he can tell you it's a lot of pressure, correct? Right? Right? Key details at the end, I said what? Hold. Okay? You gotta sit there and pose. If you saw it the, with the Barnett submission, it wasn't like boom, tap. Sat there and held him out for the count. Okay? That whole time he was on his back, he, he, he couldn't breathe. He was suffering. Okay? Um, this is not a choke like a blood choke where you can put someone out three, four seconds depending on how tight it is. This is a, a, a wind choke, like he can't breathe. You're pushing all the air out of his lungs. At this point, he breathed out at some point, and now he can't get his breath back in, okay? And you're just holding till they tap out or pass out. Make sense? Yes, it's not as fast a process. The tap may come fast because, you know, people, when I teach moves, I don't like to teach it based on the person tapping out. I like to pretend I'm fighting someone that wants to go to the death on me, like there's a street fight or something in the back of the gym, and tapping's not an option. He'll scream and stuff, but it's gotta be finished, right? 
So that's the mentality I like to have. So I, when I do these moves, I, that's the mentality. He may tap right away because he'll tell you, he feels like, <gasps> like he can't breathe, right? But the reality is it's probably going to take longer for him to pass out, okay? It's not going to be like a blood choke that you can put him out right away. So once you get your position, I'm not going to hold it on him, obviously, I'm going to pretend, okay? But let's say this is my position, I got him here, and this is the crank I have. You're going to sit there and you pose with it and you hold, okay, until the job's done, all right? In this case, if we're competing, it's when he taps, okay? Now, some people ask me, does it actually hurt the neck, though? Sometimes it can, okay? Depending on the, on the leverage you have in the person. And, and remember, the higher your, your, your form goes when you're doing it, the more torque you're going to have in the neck. You don't want to necessarily crank them from the base of the neck. If you can come up to the, to the crown of the head, you'll get a lot more torque as well, okay? But from my experience, the bang for your buck is going to be in the chest compression, okay? So I'm here, okay? I scoop the elbow right there, lock. I use an S-grip. If you want to do a gable grip, that's fine. I just find it's easier to reach the S-grip, okay? From here, remember what I said? Like a cat stretch. As you come in, you crank up and you hold, okay? What you don't want to do is come here and crank up and get too excited going up, okay? You won't get a tap from that, right? right? Yeah, not at all, right? This doesn't do, doesn't do anything. And you can see my base is looking a little wacky now, right? Things will start happening. Okay? It's down and in right there. Anyone see it one more time? Oh, last common mistake I'm going to address. Remember, when I'm doing this, I'm putting weight down on his chest as I'm cranking up. Simultaneous, right? Dropping weight, crank, okay? It's like I'm rolling over him right here. One common mistake that people get into when they're doing this is they're, they're thinking like cranking backwards. You know, some people that go over much this way, and some people kind of lean forward with it. You don't want to do this, okay? He'll get you bridged, and it's not getting the pressure you want. Now, one more thing I forgot to, to mention. When I go for the submission, he's got to be what? Flat on his back. If he's on his side, okay, don't try from here to do this. It's a totally different machine. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to say you can't tap the guy out. I mean, there's some really strong people out there in this world. Maybe you can rip his head off from here. Okay, but it's a totally different thing. Because now, am I collapsing his lungs at all here? No. No, now I'm going straight for neck. Okay, and from my experience, you're not going to tap a guy out from here. But like I said, maybe it's exceptions, it's really strong people, but you, it's not the same move. Okay, if he's on his side and you're here, top priority is to pull the arm, put him flat on his back, and now you're here in position. You guys got it? Yes, sir. One last thing. Oh, want to get me back? <laughs> what? Even the this grip oh, that we're that, the grip that we're doing here, this is like I haven't seen that people teach this anywhere else. This is a really cool grip. When we scoop the elbow, because you get a shoulder lock pressure. Like part of the tapping for me is also the shoulder. Yeah, it's true. I didn't mention that. Because this true. is this is like a kimura when I'm doing this, mm -hmm. right? So this is also a really cool uh, little tip that you might not get anywhere else. So make sure that you are getting this here. And it's, you, you scoop it sort of like a heel hook. It's because even just like this, uh, yeah. well, it's a little tap in itself. Yeah, I forgot to mention that, but it's a shoulder lock too. Yeah, so that's there. So here in my guess, most people just do this. And this works, but this works better. Oh, yeah. And this grip is a lot stronger. Like you can lock your hands well. So just make sure you keep that in mind.